Hey everybody, it's Will here again. Hope everybody's doing well. And today, I'm stoked to bring you another groovy guitar review from my personal collection. Hope you enjoy. Today, we're having a look at this 1974 Gibson 20th Anniversary Les Paul Custom. The Les Paul Custom was the top of the line for Gibson's Les Paul range and was first introduced in late 1953 alongside the Gold Top Les Paul model, which had two P90s. And I believe in the same year, Gibson came out with the Les Paul Junior, which was the single pickup, slab body, no binding, kind of the most basic student model. So it was around this time in 54 that they expanded the range both upward and downward. And if you wanted the best Les Paul that Gibson offered for many years, and really even in some ways still today, it's the Les Paul Custom. So the original guitar again came out late 53. It had, it was all mahogany. It had the mahogany neck with the ebony fingerboard. The regular gold tops had rosewood fingerboards. Had multi-ply binding. Had this lovely split diamond headstock inlay and binding around the headstock as well. Featured gold hardware. The early customs featured two pickups, a Alnico 5 staple pickup in the neck and a regular P90 in the bridge. Featured the ABR1 bridge, uh, as well as very often in the 50s you would see Les Paul customs that had Bigsby vibrato tailpieces, often as standard. In around 1957, the model was changed to have three patent applied for humbucking pickups, although sometimes you can see them with two. Um, and that was made up into early 61 in that configuration before the Les Paul of this body design was replaced with the Les Paul that had the SG body shape. In 1968, the Custom was reintroduced kind of in a late 50s spec, although they had two humbucking pickups. Um, it came out along with a gold top Les Paul with P90s. That was the new Les Paul line for 68. And the Les Paul Customs were made in that general configuration in the New Orleans era uh, to those specs up into 74, early 75, which brings us to this guitar square in the Norlin era. This guitar has what they call fretless wonder frets on it. And now the reason for the fretless wonder frets initially was, was Les Paul's own preference. He was a jazz player, he liked to play with heavier strings, and he was doing a lot of faster, quicker guitar work. The idea of bending strings wasn't really on his radar. So the lower frets really allowed him to get a, uh, an action that he was comfortable with for the more technically demanding tunes that he was playing. And it's also said that he liked the idea of having a black guitar on television because if you wore a black suit, it would blend right into the, the suit and have a very elegant look to it. This guitar here doesn't differ too much from the 50s spec, although many subtleties did change in the New Orleans era, uh, particularly as you get into the 70s. You started to see what is called the pancake body construction, which is where they would slip in a uh, thin piece of maple in between the two slabs of mahogany. The top carves on these changed pretty drastically. This top carve is, is fairly flat when compared to a 50s spec guitar. Um, you start to see the Gibson T-top humbucking pickups, which are a fantastic, I believe it's an Alnico 5 magnet. Uh, I find they're a great sounding hard rock pickup, certainly not as hot as the DiMarzio Super Distortions of the day that were very popular modification but still a fantastic sounding pickup through a cranked up old Fender or Marshall amp. Still has the fretless wonder frets. Uh, these, most of them featured uh, the Klusen waffle back tuners, although this one has uh, Schallers. And just the standard ABR1 and stop tail piece. 
In around 1975, certainly by 76, you see customs are starting to be made in Nashville. The fret wire changed to a slightly bigger, still a fairly low profile, but a lot wider a fret. Uh, the tuners changed to Grovers or Schallers. The actual bridge changed from the ABR1 style used on the Kalamazoo made instruments to the so-called Nashville style bridge, which I believe was made by Schaller in Germany. And also you start to see more colors become available. Uh, traditionally for the early 70s, the Les Paul Custom was available in black, white, or some shades of sunburst. But by the late 70s, you start to see natural, uh, wine red, and even some other cool colors like silver burst. Some of my favorite players that have used Les Paul Customs, aside from Les Paul himself, um, particularly 70s Les Paul Customs, uh, people like uh, Steve Jones from the Sex Pistols, Randy Rhodes, his main guitar was a, uh, or one of them was a 20th anniversary Les Paul Custom, as this is, and uh, numerous other people played uh, cool Les Paul Customs that were dressed up in this configuration with the white plastic parts and the open face pickups, including Steve Marriott from Humble Pie, as well as Robbo from Thin Lizzy, Circa 78, Live and Dangerous. Although it's very likely that both of their guitars were actually original 50s examples and not 70s ones as this is. This particular guitar has had quite a life. Uh, it's definitely squarely in the player's grade camp. It's had a headstock repair and the whole back of the neck has been refinished. Uh, I believe it was done locally by the Folklore Center here in Halifax sometime in the 80s, and it's, it's an excellent job. Uh, the tuners have been replaced with Schaller, original 70s Schaller tuners that I put on here to replace the copies that it had. Uh, interestingly, I think the neck was actually sanded or shaved, kind of like a Jimmy Page thing, in the, uh, when the repair was done, because this is one of the smallest necks I've ever seen on any Les Paul. Uh, it makes an Ibanez seem large in the hand, to be quite honest, particularly when you also factor in the very small fretless wonder frets. But uh, it still has its original T-top pickups. The bridge and tailpiece are likely newer replacements. I think they might be Godos. Uh, this guitar is the heaviest Les Paul I've ever owned. I know the customs of this era generally were quite heavy, but uh, this one weighs in about 11 11 pounds or so, so I have to keep a padded strap on here at all times for when I want to play this one. Anyway, thanks for taking the time to listen to this discussion portion, and I hope you enjoy hearing some sound samples of the 1974 20th anniversary Gibson Les Paul Custom. Cheers.